he was compared with Zidane and selected by Pele as one of the greatest of all time. He could have chosen a different path, but he sacrificed his legacy to save the club he loved. This is the story of Rui Costa, the forgotten legend who always put Benfica over his own career. The club of his life. How good does a player need to be in order to be compared with nothing less than Zinedine Zidane at his prime? Today, it seems like a pointless discussion, but Rui Costa was once a good opponent to fight for the Ballon d'Or with Zizou. He was so good that when FIFA asked Pele to select the best players of the 20th century, the Brazilian legend chose Rui Costa among the greatest. So if he was so good, why is it that he's often forgotten and young people have to go through Wikipedia or YouTube to find out who he was? The reason is simple, Benfica. The Portuguese giants were responsible for ruining Rui Costa's legacy. Did he have bad performances there? Not at all. It was the player who decided to put the team above everything else in his career. You see, he's such a big fan that his family assured that Benfica was his first word as a toddler. Soon enough, when he was nine, he had his first encounter with the team. Benfica organized a day within the club's facilities to thank the season ticket holders. Portuguese legend Eusebio would then randomly choose 22 kids to play a friendly game. For most of those 500 kids, this meant to have a nice day playing football at the club. But Rui Costa was not a regular at all. He saw it like the perfect chance to prove his value. Eusebio couldn't believe his eyes. He approached Rui Costa's parents and a few days later, he was already playing for Benfica's academy. Years went by and he couldn't impress the club's board or the first team manager. In fact, he gave his first steps as a professional thanks to Benfica's arch rivals, Porto. The unexpected savior. Rui Costa was 19 years old when he was about to become a free agent. But Benfica's academy coach called him up for a friendly derby against Porto. What he didn't know was that Fafe, a third-tier club, had sent scouts and part of their board to watch some of Porto's prospects in action. They had scheduled a post-game meeting with Porto's president to negotiate the loan of their best academy players. Porto's boss never showed up, and just before leaving, they remembered that Benfica kid. And that's how Porto played a key role in Rui Costa's career, avoiding Benfica from making one of the biggest mistakes in their history. Rui Costa went on loan to Fafa and achieved a marvelous second place, which granted him the possibility of playing in the 1991 U-20 World Cup. Benfica above all. Portugal's golden generation, as we now know them, was led by Rui Costa and another Portuguese goat, Luis Figo. Together, they actually won the U-20 World Cup, in which they beat Brazil in the finals, with Rui Costa scoring the last goal in the penalty shootout. But even though they were national heroes, Benfica still didn't give Rui Costa many minutes on the field. Finally, he received the chance to be a starter in one game, and he scored a hat trick. That's when the Eagles finally understood that such a player couldn't be left out of the starting 11 ever again. Rui Costa helped Benfica to finish second in the league and win their first Portuguese Cup in seven years. Underestimated by his own club, the other Lisbon Giants, Sporting, tried to sign him the following summer and offered him 10 times the salary he had at Benfica. But Rui Costa never chose money over glory and decided to stay. His actions quickly earned him the love of the fans and he became the team's best player, leading Benfica to the league title in 1994. Of course, his incredible form wasn't overlooked in Europe, and Barcelona was hours away from signing him. Benfica and the Catalans had reached an agreement, but in the last minute, the Portuguese team asked for more money, and the Blaugranas canceled the operation. The vast majority of footballers would have been furious with this, but again, Rui Costa put Benfica above all. He only agreed to leave when the club had financial problems and only after recently promoted team Fiorentina offered to pay what Benfica had previously asked Barcelona. Rui Costa left Portugal to play in Serie A, where he would become a legend. La Luce As we stated before, Fiorentina had recently secured their way back to Italy's first-tier league. As a result, they were obviously not candidates for any European position and even less for title contenders. But Rui Costa was about to make history. Alongside Argentine striker Gabriel Batistuta, they formed one of the Serie A most iconic duos. The Portuguese mastered the art of assisting, while Batagol benefited from every single Rui Costa pass. They obtained a fourth place in the league and won the Italian Cup and Super Cup, their first title in two decades. 
By that point, Fiorentina fans didn't want to call him Rui Costa anymore and came up with what would be his nickname all over Italy. The Luce, also known as The Light. The reason of this nickname was as simple as magical. Rui Costa had brought a brightness to the team that was used to having more disappointments than success. But even though his journey in Italy couldn't go better, the Portuguese never forgot just how much Benfica meant to him. He played against them in a friendly game, and after scoring, he started to cry. As he would later admit, he just couldn't believe he had hurt the club he loved. Come on, La Luce, it was just a friendly game. Anyway, the Benfica fans applauded him and showed Rui Costa that a goal wouldn't change the feelings they had for him. His journey at Fiorentina would last until 2001. In his last season, and without Batistuta, who had joined Roma that campaign, Rui Costa led his team to another Italian Cup title. To put it in context, to this day, Fiorentina had only won three titles in almost half a century, and Rui Costa was the star in all of them. La Luce had made history once again, and applied the same logic as in Benfica. He only left Fiorentina due to the club's financial problems. Milan paid 42 million euros, and that's how Rui Costa saved Fiorentina while joining one of Europe's biggest teams. By the same time, Zidane joined Real Madrid, and the debate was open. Who's better, Zizou or La Luce? And even though today the Frenchman is a few steps above the Portuguese, back then it was Rui Costa who had the lead. After breaking his wrist at his first match with Milan, he had a nightmarish season with ongoing injuries. He failed to shine with the Rossoneri and had a terrible 2002 World Cup with Portugal. It seemed like Rui Costa's best days were behind, but La Luce found the light again. Milan brought Brazilian marvel Rivaldo to replace him, but Rui Costa had an incredible 2002-2003 season. He overshadowed Zidane in the Champions League semifinals and won the UCL title being the top assists provider in the tournament, while Rivaldo was sitting on the bench. He went on to win the European Super Cup and the Scudetto, managing to win every single possible club title in his career. It was only when Milan signed 10-year younger prospect Kaka that Rui Costa began to lose his place as a starter. Far from being angry or ashamed by this, La Luce stated that it was a pleasure to play alongside the Brazilian, and even predicted that he would win the Ballon d'Or, as he did. By 2006, Rui Costa had decided to leave Milan. Still in great shape, he could have joined lots of teams, but once again, he put the club of his life above everything else. The Last Dance as a way to thank him for five incredible years, Milan accepted Rui Costa's request of leaving as a free agent so that he could sign for Benfica without costing the Portuguese club a cent. This was arguably one of the most selfless actions in elite football history. The guy who rejected the arch rivals despite having little participation with the first team. The man who agreed to leave in order to save the club from bankruptcy. The idol who had brought glory to the Lisbon Giants in a tormentous time. That way, 12 years after his departure, the prodigy was back. Rui Costa played for two full seasons at Benfica before retiring and is currently the club's president. Benfica has always been the priority in his life, and he even sacrificed his legacy in football to return to the club he loves. A true life-lasting love story. Rui Costa made history throughout his whole career, but even when he was considered as good as Zidane, he put Benfica over everything else. Is there another case of club commitment like his? Let us know in the comments. Did you know that Kylian Mbappe is in love with one of Rui Costa's former clubs? Check out Oh My Goals video to find out why the Frenchman adores AC Milan. Thanks for watching.